Hello there all, welcome back to Yale Sakura. This video is the first of the Rubik's Cube series where I'm going to show you how to create the base model. So the way we are going to get started is first I'll show you the kind of Rubik's Cube which I'm going to create. Then jumping into Houdini, I'll show you a few interface changes which I'm going to make to the latest version which is 14. And then we're going to go create the model itself. So let's get started. Before we get started with actually modeling the cube, I just want to give you a heads up on the kind of cube I'm making. So there's a cube which I have, as you can see, it's about five and a half centimeters long. And um, there are a few details which I want you to observe. So first off, as you can see here, it has some real nice rounding on all of these intersections on the cube so that it does not get cut while rotating. And also, if you observe these corners here, it has some very nice bevel going across, so it's very rounded. Not only that, the bevel goes across on all these pieces. And I should have cut my nails. Now, uh, apart from these bevels, this cube is uh, purely made of plastic. Well, not purely, but mostly made of plastic. And what I mean by that is that it does not have stickers. So the color actually passes through the cube. So if I rotate my cube, you can see here on the side that the color actually passes through. So I'm going to try and make sure I'm also going to get this kind of detail in Houdini so that I could see the colors on the cube when it rotates. So let's now jump into Houdini and try to model this cube with all of these details in. Now here within Houdini, I've gone ahead and updated it to the latest version which is 14. So there are a couple of changes to the UI which I want to tweak the way I want. First off, I want to have my construction plane. Then I want to get rid of this origin gnomon here. And also I want to reduce the size of all these icons in the interface so I have more room to work with rather than these guys taking up more space. So for the origin grid, I'll turn it on here in the sidebar. Then I'll scroll down at the bottom and go to display options. Here under guides, I can turn off the origin gnomon. So that's gone. I want Houdini to open up the same way every time. So I'll also hit save as default. Once this is done, to reduce the icon size, I can go to Edit, Preferences, General User Interface and change the global UI size to be compact. Once I hit Accept, I need to restart Houdini to apply all of my changes. Now to start creating the Rubik's Cube, I need to have a base object and the box is a perfect one. So I'll go Control click on the box and rename that to be the cube. Now once that, that is done, here in the viewport, if I shift over to my shaded mode, you can see that there are black patches all over the surface of this box. This is an issue with the normals that we will address at a later time, but for now it's quite distracting. So for this reason, I'll go here at the top and change the shading mode to be flat wire shaded instead of smooth. This is going to give me a flat box which is much easier to work with and is less distracting. Now to start adding in more details, let's jump into the cube and also rename the box shape node inside to be the base because this is the one from which all of the nodes are going to be created. Now here, once this base is selected, you can see that the number of divisions on this cube are very little. For a Rubik's Cube which I'm creating, which is a 3 cross 3 cube, I need to have 3 sections or 3 squares going all the way across in all X, Y and Z axis. And for that, on the base, I have axis divisions which I can make use of. So I can just go ahead, type in 4 on each one of the division axes and this is going to divide the faces by the number of points or edges. So 4 edges are required for 3 faces. So now I have the number of faces I need to create the actual Rubik's Cube. Now for the next step in creating the Rubik's Cube, I want the corner pieces, edge pieces and center pieces separated out. So for this, I'm going to make use of the extrude node. Before I make use of that, let me go ahead and give you an example of what exactly is going to happen. I've selected these particular faces. I'm going to go tab and use poly extrude. So applying the extrude, I can use a gizmo to pull these faces out. The faces on the top are the front faces. The faces connecting the front faces back to the original model are the side faces. I can go into the options for this extrude and tell whether if I want the front disabled or if I want to remove the sides. So only the front is visible. Not only this, 
Under local parameters, I have an option to inset the faces. When I use this inset option, if I am on the top viewport, you can see that this inset option just brings all the faces down towards the center. And there are several ways that this inset works. I can keep the point shared using normals, which is going to give me a different result, or I can just tell don't share the points, and this is going to give me the most interesting result. Each individual face gets inset on its own. So now if I use the inset option, each face just goes away from each other. Not only that, going back to options, turning off output sides basically makes sure that none of the faces are touching each other. So basically I individualized each face. I can also bring them back to the original location that they were supposed to be at, which is nothing but zero on Z axis. So if I keep them there, all of the faces are individually separated. Only problem is that I don't really want them separated out just on these particular faces. I want all the faces on the entire cube separated out. So the group option here on the top makes sure the effect up is applied only to these selected faces. I can go select all these options, get rid of that and hit enter and this applies the option all over the cube. Now, the next thing is, because of the number of uh, silhouettes we have, the, like uh, the broken silhouette we have with the amount of detail we can see through the cube, it gets a little bit distracting while working, so I don't want any of the faces which are not facing me to be visible. To do this, I can go into Display Options, under Optimize, I can turn Remove Back Faces on. This basically gets rid of all the faces which are not facing the camera. So this helps me optimize my view and also look at all the details. Now, the next step is, when I have applied this inset, all of these faces are just separated out. But I don't want the corner or the edge pieces separated, I still want them to be connected. And Extrude node still has options for those. So let me go back and enable output sides for now. And here, if I have used any amount of inset, I can go ahead, use the same amount of inset or an average same amount of inset here in my extrude Z axis and immediately you can see at a particular value when both of the, these are same, which means both the polygons have the same points, all the additional faces get removed. So here, if I change the value, you can see at the exact value, everything is gone and only when they're separate, the additional faces are visible. So what I need to do is just copy the inset value, paste it into my Z axis and now I can set my inset value to be anything I want, even the smallest amount but only the gaps in between would be the one which would be removed. So going back to options, I'll tell output sides off. So now I have a perfect Rubik's cube with all the pieces separated out. All I'm going to do is make sure the number here is as low as possible. That's it for now guys. I hope you guys found a tutorial useful. I know this one's been a little bit too simple, but uh, the future videos are going to get a bit too complicated a bit too soon. So I'm taking my time and making them a little short. So the next video is going to be about adding a bit more detail to the Rubik's Cube. We are still continuing with modeling. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Till then, I hope you have a great time.